What's up everybody and welcome back to another prediction video here. Last night, the MLS beat Liga MX in the All-Star game. I know it's just an All-Star game, but still, it's pretty cool. I believe we are at the point now that the MLS is actually better than Liga MX. Please tell me in the comments below what you think. So let's jump into this weekend, uh, weekend's games. A lot of games are on Saturday and only two on Sunday. So first up, we have New York Red Bulls versus Orlando City. Currently, the Red Bulls are one win, one draw, three losses in the last five. And currently, Orlando City is one win and four losses. These teams set fourth and eighth in the table. Red Bull are fourth. Orlando City are eighth. Red Bull are at home. Orlando City have not kept a clean sheet in the last seven matches and haven't won an away match in the last eight matches. So with that being said, I think even though that the Red Bull struggle at home, I think this game is going to end up in a two to nothing win for the Red Bull. I should make the scores ridiculous this week and make them all like four to three, uh, five to two. Like it, so many goals uh, these last couple weekends so anyway moving on FC Cincinnati versus Atlanta United currently FC Cincinnati are one win three draws and a loss in the last five and Atlanta United are two wins two draws and a loss in the last five uh, currently FC Cincinnati are in the playoffs in the sixth position where Atlanta is 12th in the table they are playing at TQL Stadium Atlanta have not lost against FC Cincinnati in their la the last five meetings which they are three wins and two draws, but Atlanta haven't scored in their last two away matches. I think that they will score in this game, but I believe that FC Cincinnati is the stronger side, and I believe that FC Cincinnati get this done, we'll say two to one. I think that Atlanta did a good job last weekend against Seattle winning two to one at home, but Seattle is kind of struggling this year, so I, I can't go against uh, FC Cincinnati, I mean, last week they did beat the number one team in the East, uh, the Philadelphia Union, and they were at home. So I think they will continue that at-home streak that they have just started there. So next up, we have New England Revs versus DC United. Currently, the Revs are one win, two draws, two losses in the last five, and DC United are one win, one draw, and three losses in their last five. Currently, these two teams are not in the playoffs. The Revs are sitting at 10th, and DC United are 14th in the table. Revs, though, are unbeaten at home in the last nine games, and DC United have not scored in their last two matches and haven't scored in three away matches. So I think the Revs will get this done. DC United have a lot, a lot of work to do. So I'm going to say that this is going to be a convincing win. I think that the Revs are going to win two to nothing there at Gillette Stadium. Moving on, we have Philadelphia Union versus Chicago Fire. Both of these teams are ridiculously on fire right now. Uh, the Union did lose last weekend against FC Cincinnati, but currently they are four wins and a loss in the last five. And Chicago Fire are four wins and a draw in their last five. Currently, the Union are still in first in the East, and Chicago are in the playoffs if they started today. That's pretty cool. Chicago struggled in the first half of the season nonstop, and here they are, as of right now, making the playoffs. Do I think that that's going to happen? I hope so. I kind of hope that Chicago uh, make the playoffs this year. Yeah, the Chicago Fire haven't lost in their last five matches, and the Union are ranked third at home this season, so I would say that they're just behind LAFC and uh, Austin FC. This is going to be a tough one because Union lost their last game and Chicago's on fire. But I don't think that Chicago go into Subaru Park and win. I just don't think that they can do it. Uh, Union are too good at home. So I'm going to have to say this game is going to be a 3-1 to win for the Union. Next up, we have Toronto FC versus the Portland Timbers. The Timbers are another team that I feel like are kind of on fire, even though they have drawn a lot. Um, but currently, Toronto FC are two wins, a draw, and two losses in their last five. And the Portland Timbers are four draws and a win in their last five. 
Currently, Toronto is 13th in the East, and the Timbers just squeaking into the playoffs at 7th there in the West. Timbers have not kept a clean sheet in the last five matches, so it's going to be it's going to be rough. These two teams are split with uh, four wins apiece against each other and two draws, so they're pretty even usually when they're playing against each other. They are at BMO Field. You know, I'm going to have to do this. Uh, Toronto beat Nashville in Nashville 4-3, to and I think I picked that game to be 3-3 to last week, I believe. No, I actually said Nashville was going to win 3-1, to so I take that back. So Nashville did score the 3, but I think that Toronto is going to build off of that, and I actually think that they're going to get this done, and they're going to win 3-2 to over Portland Timber. Moving on, we have Inter-Miami against NYCFC. Currently, Inter-Miami are one win, two draws, and two losses in their last five, and NYCFC are three wins, a draw, and a loss in their last five. I thought that they were going to lose last weekend, and um, I got that right that they did. They were going to lose. Uh, I think they're going to struggle without Castellanos. I really do. Currently, NYCFC are second in the table, and Inter Miami are ninth. Inter Miami have not beat NYCFC, and NYCFC have won all five matches against Inter Miami, so that's a, a stat to keep track of. I, I want to go with NYCFC in this matchup, but I actually think that it's going to end in a 2-2 two -two draw. Uh, I, just, I just can't see NYCFC winning on the road. Inter-Miami have been pretty decent at home-ish, I think. But, yeah, I'm going to have to go with a 2-2 two -to -two draw for these two. Moving on, we have Austin FC versus Sporting Kansas City. Uh, currently, Austin are two wins, two draws, and a loss in the last five. And Sporting Kansas City are one win and four losses in their last five. Currently, Austin is second in the table, and Sporting Kansas City are 14th in the table. Uh, right now, Austin have won two games against Sporting, and Sporting have beat Austin once, and they've drawn once. Uh, Austin FC are ranked first at home, and Sporting haven't scored in their last two away matches. And to be honest, I think that continues here. I actually think that Austin are going to beat them 3 to nothing there at Q2 Stadium. I know that that's a big gap, but... I think Austin's just too good, even though they drew in their last home game and the home game before that they lost. But yeah, I think that they win this game three to nothing over Sporting Kansas City. Next up, we have Colorado Rapids versus Columbus Crew. Currently, Colorado are three wins, a draw, and a loss in the last five. And Columbus Crew are two wins, two draws, and a loss in their last five. Currently, Columbus are setting fifth in the East, so they are in the playoffs currently and Colorado are setting 10th in the West there. So they got uh, they got some work to be cut out to get into the playoffs. Uh, currently, these two teams have not drawn any of their last three matches against each other, and currently Columbus Crew are unbeaten in the last five away games that they've had. So this is going to be a good one, uh, especially with it being at Dick Sporting Goods Park. Uh, to be honest, I think that they will get a tie in this matchup. Both teams are scoring a good bit. I mean, Colorado have scored nine in their last two games, where Columbus have scored four. I'm going to say that this one ends in a three to three draw there at Dick Sporting Goods Park. I have to pick. I have to pick one of the one of the games to be high scoring, right? I mean, freaking Colorado have a four to three win and then a five to four win in their last two games. So, anyway. We got FC Dallas versus San Jose Earthquake. Currently, FC Dallas are two wins, two draws, and a loss in the last five. And San Jose are three draws and two losses in their last five. FC Dallas are sitting at third in the table, where San Jose Earthquake are sitting 13th in the table. San Jose are dominating in this uh, matchup between each other. They have 11 wins, and Dallas only has five wins against the Earthquake. So that's kind of a... A cool stat, I guess. Uh, San, San Jose Earthquake haven't lost to FC Dallas in their last nine meetings, but San Jose have not won a match in their last six attempts. And I don't think that's going to happen here. I think that Dallas is going to end this nine game 
streak that FC uh, that San Jose have on them, and I think they win this game three to one uh, there at Toyota Stadium. So staying in Texas, we have Houston Dynamo versus Montreal. Currently, the Dynamo are one win and four losses in the last five, and Montreal, of course, are pretty good as always. They are currently three wins and two draws in their last five. Uh, these two teams have pretty much split games. Uh, Houston have eight wins, Montreal have seven wins, and they have drawn one against each other. Houston haven't kept a clean sheet in the last eight matches, and they have lost their last three matches, where Montreal haven't lost in the last five and have scored seven goals in their last five games. So, with that being said, I will have to say that Montreal will go into Houston and win this game. Uh, they are going to get an away win here, and I think I think this is going to be a 2-1 to one win for Montreal. Now we go out to California. We have LA Galaxy versus Vancouver Whitecaps. Currently, the Galaxy are two wins and three losses in the last five, and the Whitecaps are two wins, two draws, and a loss. Currently, LA are ninth in the table, and the Whitecaps are 11th, so... Both teams are out of the playoffs as of right now. LA have scored six goals in the last five matches. The Whitecaps have not kept a clean sheet in the last seven matches, but they are unbeaten in their last four away games. It's going to be a pretty good game, uh, but I think that LA, even though they lost to Sporting Kansas City last weekend, I think that they will step it up and win this game at home. They're actually pretty good at home this year. I think that they'll win this game one to nothing. I think this one's going to be a low-scoring game, but yes, I will go one nothing LA Galaxy. So staying in California, and the last game on Saturday is LAFC versus Charlotte FC. Currently, LAFC are four wins and a loss in the last five, and that loss is against CF America, so not even an MLS team. Uh, and currently, Charlotte are two wins and three losses in the last five. LAFC are currently first, and Charlotte are 11th in the East there, so that kind of sucks for them. Uh, LAFC are ranked first at home, so they are tough to beat there, but Charlotte have scored eight goals in their last five matches. These two teams have not played against each other, and I think that with how inconsistent Charlotte has been, I believe that LAFC have no problem with this game. They are at home, they're number one at home, and Charlotte are very inconsistent. So I'm actually going to say that it's going to be a 4-2 to two game. Uh, LAFC wins 4-2. to two. So our first game on Sunday, we have Nashville versus Minnesota United. Currently Nashville are three draws and two losses in the last five. Minnesota United are three wins, a draw, and a loss in their last five. These two teams have played each other twice, and both times they have drawn. Uh, and both were home and away. So the last game was one to one, Minnesota United uh, at Minnesota United, and they drew 0 0 in Nashville. Nashville haven't kept a clean sheet in the last five matches, and they haven't won in their last five matches. And currently, Minnesota set fourth, Nashville set sixth in the table. So both teams are in the playoffs right now. And to be honest, I think this might be a must win for Nashville if they want to stay in the playoff race. Uh, I know that they are six, but I think with the points and stuff, it is a very close, uh, yeah, it's a very close running because you have fifth place is 34 points, sixth and seventh place, both 33 points. Your eighth place is 32, your ninth and 10th and 11th place is 30. So I think this might be a must win for Nashville, especially with them being at home. And I think that they might get this done. Uh, it's going to be a close call, but I'm going to say that they win this game 3-2 to two there at Geodis Park. And that leads us into our final game of the weekend, uh, which is Seattle versus Real Salt Lake. Currently, Seattle are two wins and three losses in the last five. And Real Salt Lake are one win, one draw, and three losses in their last five. Currently, Real Salt Lake are in the playoffs, sitting in fifth, and uh, Seattle are eighth. And again, that bunch is very close, so it's one of those things. Seattle, if Seattle would beat Real Salt Lake, they would actually jump them in the table. So 
Very close race there in the West, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Seattle have scored five goals in their last five matches, and Real Salt Lake have won the previous three matches against Seattle Sounders, but I don't think that's going to happen uh, today, or not today, but in this game. Uh, I think that they'll get the job done, and really they're they're on a streak of like winning two to, they're in two to one games or one to nothing games Seattle are uh, it's very very weird and very consistent but I, I believe that they actually beat Real Salt Lake uh, two to nothing at home I think that they're going to try to make a statement here at Lumen Field so two to nothing uh, Seattle Sounders so thank you for watching especially if you made it this far please give the video a thumbs up especially if you made it this far also uh, please join the Discord. The link is down below. Uh, we've had some people chit-chatting in there about MLS games, and over the weekend we we had a couple people chatting. So the more uh, people we have, the better. It, it's awesome. Come in, chat. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you like the content, please subscribe. We are on that push to get to 300. Uh, we just hit the 200 mark, but let's get to that 300. So. Thank you all again. I appreciate every single one of you, and we'll see you next time.